Today we're talking about OASIS and SOAP message security and the support for these standards under Active Beeple Enterprise. It's an in introduction. The um, OASIS WS Security, otherwise known as WSS or WSSE standard, it's a framework for assuring integrity and confidentiality of SOAP messages. And the way that these integrity and confidentiality is ensured is integrity is assured through digital signature. Confidentiality of message data is through encryption. And the scope of the standard would cover how to encode binary security tokens and include tokens as in opaque encrypted keys and associate them with message content within the message itself. So the um, WSS com is comprised of a number of supporting standards in addition to the um, overall umbrella of WS security, and that would include the username token profile, X509 token profile, SAML token profile, canonical XML, XML encryption, and XML signature. Some of the common namespaces that are referenced from within the specification are um, listed here. The WSI profile it serves as a guideline for directing how we support WS security within our product. And what WSI basic security profile does is it clarifies the WS security standards in order to promote greater interoperability across different implementations, different vendors. And the motivation for this is the fact that WS security standards have a multitude of choices and options and permutations, and what WSI seeks to do is reduce the number of options to those that are considered to be both secure and widely adopted and therefore more likely to be able to be interoperable across different vendors and different implementations. So using that as a guideline, as a message consumer, as in when we receive messages, we'll accept and consume any messages that conform to the options that are deemed allowable under WSI guidelines. So if we can make sense of it, we have the providers installed to handle the different cipher suites that are used to encrypt the message. We can identify the keys and the associations. We'll be able to process it and consume it, and we're happy with that. As a producer, now, when we construct a message and we apply signature and encryption, we'll only support the recommended algorithms out of the box the way it's set up and configured. So we will strictly adhere to the recommendations under the specification when we send. And in view of that, what we support from a very detailed perspective would be token types. We support the username token, SAML token, SAML version 1.1 tokens, and for X509, a number of token references that are used. Wherever possible, we'll use a direct binary reference to an X509 token that would be used where we can directly embed the um, encoded certificate itself within the message. It's without having to make it an external reference. If that's not possible, we'll use issuer serial as the identification method for an X509. The others we'll support, but again, only if we're receiving it and we can identify and process the token, then that will be acceptable. And for, similarly, for uh, Cypress, different um, encryption algorithms. For symmetric encryption, we will send and receive using triple DES. The AES 128 and 256 will accept on, as a receiver. The um, encryption key transport, we will use RSA 15 wherever possible, but we can consume both variants of the uh, RSA key transport. For the signature digest, there's one supported for sending and receiving. 
Same with the algorithm and canonical XML transform algorithm. And again, these are what are considered to be the mandatory algorithms that are defined under the specifications that we're adhering to. In order to use and apply WS security to messages that are consumed and sent using active people, we use WS policy. And what WS policy provides, it's a general purpose model and syntax it, it, to describe the additional quality of service attributes that would apply when sending or receiving a web service messages. And we use WS policy that's attached to WSDL subjects as well as attached to endpoints and services defined in our deployment descriptors. And again, those are used to specify attributes such as the security policy that's in force for a particular send or receive. Within the deployment descriptor, there are two types of entities. There's my roles and there's partner roles that would be associated with either a service endpoint for receiving messages and that's under my role, and a partner role is a endpoint that would be used as the target when sending a request in an invoke activity. We um, use policy to specify the um, various security requirements, and there's also out there a WS security policy, which is defined as a set of general security policy assertions. The most up-to-date version covers not only WS security policy, but also elements of WS trust and secure conversation. Across various vendors, there's support for policy on a wide basis, and some including IBM and BEA and Microsoft, they will generally use some vendor-specific assertions simply to make the um, description of the security policy for a given invoke or receive much more concise. The uh, security policy itself tends to be rather verbose. And um, there appears to be not a whole lot, you know, across different versions of products, different vendors in terms of what versions of the policy spec and most of them will have some vendor-specific extensions that are used. So just something to be aware of. A lot of times you'll need to consult the documentation to find out what exactly the expectation is for an, an external service that you may need to invoke to find out what exactly this policy is referring to. For example, some of them will have shorthand for the headers. So on WebLogic 9, it would be system headers, System headers will translate to the WSA headers, as well as a couple of other standard message SOAP headers that are included in messages. So you would need to get underneath that to find out what those are. The um, next part of the demonstration is to illustrate how you would actually use W security within the Active People Enterprise product using an example. So in the example we're going to show, it'll cover transport security, which would include HTTP basic authentication. For message security, we're going to include a username token. We're going to signature with an X509 certificate, encrypted content, signed content, and a W security timestamp. As part of this, a common use case is the fact that you will need to be able to take an incoming security token from a header or out of an incoming message that we receive within the Beeple process and then be able to propagate that as an opaque token. And we're going to demonstrate that by using the X509 certificate data Will, will be pulled from the incoming message, use that data that got pulled from the header to create a SAML authentication query, and then from the response that comes back from the SAML authority, we'll add that as a signed header to another 
request that would be a callback to the original sender. So we'll show how to make those work with a demonstration.